Well, we're at Orchid Lakes in Oxfordshire, and it's a water that I've fished on and off now for about 20 years. And it's a venue that I first fished probably around about 1993 when I came down here to do a review for one of the magazines, and I sort of fell in love with the place. Uh, I also got on with the, the owner, Marsh Pratt, they got on with him really well and it's a lake that contains some fantastic fish. You know, there's probably at the right time of the year about 20 different 30s in here. And as you can see around the lake, there's a lot of good features and it's really just a carp water. It's got that feel about it. There's an island in front of us at the moment. There's some pads, there's some weed, there's some snags, there's reed beds, there's bays. There's all sorts of different things to fish to. So it really is a carp angler's paradise really. And that's one of the reasons why I really fell in love with the place. Whenever I approach a day ticket water, I always think that you've got to go on a bit of local knowledge. It doesn't matter whether you're a Kevin Nash or a Steve Briggs, you can be the greatest carp angler in the world, but everybody needs a bit of local knowledge. And I've fished this water quite a bit, but the first thing that I did, and I know it sounds a little bit of a cliche, I have a word with the other anglers that are on the lake. I went and spoke to a few of the lads, I went and spoke to Marsh as well as Kevin, and found out where they'd been fishing, where the fish had been coming from. And you know, that's the first thing I always do whenever I come to a new venue is find out what's happening. And this swim, it's known for having fish all year round. It doesn't matter when you come here, whether it's in the depths of winter or whether it's autumn, spring or summer. You never put all your eggs into to one basket on a day ticket water because all day ticket waters can become very spotty. You know, by their very nature, there's always quite a lot of anglers on the water and they see a lot of pressure, they see different rigs, they see different baits. So one day you can be picking up fish from, in this room, let's say, tight to the island. The next minute you can be picking up from the left-hand margin or the right-hand margin. So what I'll say is to anybody is if, if you go to any day ticket water, never put all three rods to one area. Try and spread them out a bit because today they might be picking up from this margin to the right or they might be off the island. And if you've got them in one area, you're never going to find those, those sort of things out. Um, my approach today is basically the same wherever I go. I, I stick to the same rig. It sounds very boring. It says, sounds like um, I'm a bit old fashioned, but I've been using the same rig for, well, the same rig principle anyway, for about 20 years now. And it is basically just a piece of braid with a knotless knot and, and a liner liner on it and, and a bottom bait. And that's how I fish. And I have put quite a bit, out, a bit of bait out today, uh, especially tied to the island, because as I said before about local information, getting to know the water and stuff, I know by from the previous trips that I've done down here that the island has always got fish patrolling around it and they do like a good better bait because there's a lot of people that come here and they always said tend to fish with a little clump of bait or a few bits and pieces and a few bait boats going out there and with most bait boats there's the same, same sort of approach which is dump below the bait there so I've tried to go in a little bit differently by putting a bit of bait out there and spreading it around and trying to mix it up with a variety of different size baits as well. What I've done is I've looked at the features that we've got in front of us and tried to work out in my mind where I think the carp are going to be today. And I do know that certainly the set of pads that's to me right hand side here, that always holds fish. There's always a lot of fish right in the thick, um, thick set of the pads there. If you climb any of the trees at the right time of the year and look into them, you can always see fish around there. So what I've done is I've got my right hand rod just down the margin. Um, I would say, I'd say it's an area where the fish do go in and out of those the pads at the back there. The middle rod, that's out towards the island. I've got that rod actually quite tight to the island. It's only in about three foot of water because it's nice and sunny today. And I had a look at the long range weather forecast on my app on my phone. And I thought, right, if it's a little bit of sun around, those fish will be tight in and close to that island. So that's where I've got that one. And then the left hand rod, that's just on the edge of these pads here that's to the left. There's a nice little set of pads that sort of juts out there. And I've just got it over the top of there with um, half a dozen Scopex squid that's out there. I used to work for Kevin in, in the early 1990s and uh, I was one of the field testers then. And when Scopex Squid first hit the market, um, I was one of the original people to, to use it. And one of the first places I used it on was this particular water. And uh, I came down to the venue. I've got a great memory of this. And I uh, used to fish across from Dead Dog Swim to those, to those reeds. And I was fishing in there and I put the bait out. And as soon as I put the bait out, within an hour or so, the, the reeds were going you know, bending backwards and forwards and stuff. And it was great to see. And obviously to, to a young lad, when I put this new bait in, it really opened my eyes to how good some baits can be. And we put it in and I ended up catching 720s on one day, which in the early 1990s was a good catch. 
and I ended up running out of bait. It was that effective. The reason I'm using it today is because I've got so much confidence in it. You know, the good test of a bait is that it's been used for a number of years and obviously 20 years ago when it first came out and even today it's still catching fish. That tells you that that is a damn good bait. Right, we're just going to take a look at the rig that I'm using today. And as I said earlier, it's based on a rig that I've been using for 20 years now in my carping and it's caught me carp from literally hundreds of waters from around the globe. And what I've got here is a piece of missing link. This is 25 pound missing link. I'm basically just going to take this coating off and just strip it completely from the braid. And then I've got a size six fang X and all I'm going to do is tie this knotless knot style. Whip it round generally around about 10 times. There we go. And then pass it back through the eye. And there's the knot that's not sorted for me. And all I'm doing today is I'm using a bottom bait. So I'm just going to measure the length of the hair that I want and tie a little granny knot in the end. Pull it tight, trim off this excess. Pierce the boilie, put it on the hair, put the hair stop in, and I always tend to like my boilie just touching the bend of the hook. It's not too tight and it's not too, too long. And then just to complete the rig, all I'll do is take a piece of shrink tube, this is the TT shrink tube and I'll form a liner liner by piercing the tube like that and then threading that into place push it down and just push it into place that's there to form the liner liner it's also there to protect the knot as well and all I'll do to complete the rig is to attach the swivel I like a nice short hook link with a heavy lead just to drive that hook home. I'll just do a five turn grin and knot, pull that through. Trim that bit off. And there we go. It's around about eight inches in length. So stick that in boiling water, shrink it down, and cast it out, we're ready to go. I've used it now for a number of years all around the world on hundreds of different waters and yes there's times when it's probably not the best rig to be using but I do know that wherever I take that rig it will catch me a fish. It has done today yeah it's only a little one um, but we've still got a bit of time left so hopefully we'll get another one. only a little one, but uh, there's some cracking fish in here to be caught on the day ticket and hopefully we're going to see a few more of them. Right, you might have noticed that the carp cradle we're using today is slightly different to last year's model. That's because it is. Um, right in the middle of the cradle we've got these extra legs to give it a little bit more support because this particular model is the monster carp cradle it's designed for the really big carp on a continent and in a couple of weeks time i'm off to rainbow lake and then i'm off to, to hungary to hopefully catch one or two really big carp which is where this cradle will really come in handy something that's just as important as your landing net and your unhooking mats and your cradles is your medicarp kit and it comprises of a nice little towel and where you see your little areas of infection just dab it and dry it off Get hold of one of the swabs, get some of the antiseptic solution, dab it onto the swab and then just touch it up and this is perfect for little wounds where 
where the hook holes have been or any little areas that where the scales come off. Just dab it onto those little areas, make sure that that fish can bite another day. Right then, we've got the rods set for the night now, and uh, I've got my three different spots sorted. I'm relatively happy with where they are, and although it's been quite slow today, I've only had the one fish, I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna get myself a fish before tomorrow morning when I leave about nine o'clock. Either way, I've really enjoyed myself down here today. Well, it was a quiet night last night. Not a sound on the rods, but uh, typical of Orchid. Right out of the blue, just as we're packing up, we just had this little common, so that's a fantastic way to end the session. A couple of fish in the bag, and a nice, enjoyable little trip.